This summer, feel free in FP with the Summer 2022 Collection from Free People, a lifestyle brand crafted and curated for the creative spirit. As the summer heats up, Free People cools you down with bright colors and optimistic prints, always expressing your creativity. When you're looking to tune out or when you're looking to tune in, when you're looking for peace of mind, when you need that moment of zen, when you feel free in FP. Shop the Summer 2022 Collection at freepeople.com. Empire. One day, the uniform the pros wear will tell them how they're playing. So if you're a pro, we can tell you all the mechanics around the elbow. We can tell the mechanics uh, around the shoulder, uh, for the knee as well. For the soft, it's, it's more ground forces and your gait mechanics. And as we build out this, this repertoire of data and these insights, then we can start building out the entire uniform, building out that shirt, the pants, and so on. That's Dr. George Sun, CEO and founder of Nextiles, a company that is turning the idea of wearable into a full-fledged outfit. This is the Future Sport Podcast. I'm Bram Weinstein. Take a background in textiles and use that to intersperse technology into the clothing. Wearables and their ability to help athletes of all levels understand their bodies, it's grown exponentially, but what Dr. George Sun is building feels game-changing. Our guest this week is Dr. George Sun, who's the CEO and the founder of Nextiles, which is a materials science company that is merging flexible electronics with patented sewing technology. We're really going to get into the future of wearables with Dr. Sun. Thank you so much for joining us. Likewise. Thank you so much for having me. Okay. That's word soup. Simplistically, if I put this thing on, I'm going to be connected in a very different way through athletic wear. Can you kind of take me through the background of, of what the idea is and what you are building? Yeah, you really put it in a good way in terms of making it a huge experience first. So the wearables of today, you know, we think of them as pods or straps or add-ons, but the experience that Nextiles is trying to change is that it's, it's form-fitting. It's, it's for you. It's made for you. And it really shouldn't change your, uh, your way you perceive an activity or a sport or your day-to-day um, uh, things to do. So I guess what I'm trying to say is that next tiles, we build sensors directly into clothing. So they feel like fabric, they feel like threads. And so the experience remains the same. You can play soccer, baseball, whatever sport you want without any kind of you know intrusion or perturbation. Uh, the thing that underlies Nextile's technology is purely through the fabric. We can measure any kind of stretching, bending, uh, pressure on the threads, and we relay that via Bluetooth. Everything is wireless. Uh, the garment themselves are machine washable. And uh, yeah, and we're really just trying to provide a seamless environment for athletes. So what I'm picturing, and this is, you know, from, I'm picturing what EA used to do, but they would line up all the gear with all of these different sensors and monitors. You seemingly have built it into the clothing. Is that, is that right? Yeah, that's correct. And we've strategized a, uh, an, a unique or a interesting go-to-market strategy, whereas you know, we would love to build you that Iron Man suit, and we can. We can <laughs> definitely build you that uniform. We can definitely build you uh, all, you know, from head to toe. But we've been really strategic in deploying out specific garments that add high value to the end user, which are these athletes. So we've been first building out compression gear. So these compression gear are uh, compression sleeves, compression knee braces, uh, socks. Uh, we've also done a, a few things around vests. And the reason why is that we want to give you a very – uh, insightful understanding of those body parts. So if you're a throw, we can tell you all the mechanics around the elbow. We can tell the mechanics uh, around the shoulder, uh, for the knee as well. For the socks, it's, it's more ground forces and your gait mechanics. And as we build out this, this repertoire of data and these insights, then we can start building out the entire uniform, building out that shirt, those pants, and so on. So, um, yeah, kind of exactly like you just said. The basis behind it, is it to help people perform better is it help is it to help avoid injury what do you view the reasons behind it yeah that's another great question i would say philosophically and i don't mean to 
dance around the question, but I think philosophically, what I what I would like to address is ownership of data, is, is knowledge of oh. data. I think we take a lot of the data for granted. Uh, nothing bad against um, the status quo, but this idea of you know ten thousand steps is what it takes to be healthy. I mean, we all kind of taken that for granted. That has been publicized highly through today's wearables, but uh, I, I think there's this black box or myth around the data and how consumers can perceive that data. I, I really don't want to make it black box. Uh, all of our data sets are, are available. Um, they're, they're in the raw form and analyzed form. And we want users and the athletes to, to see how their bodies are moving in real time and to show them you know, everything from, from A to Z. Um, afterwards, though, um, I guess what we're trying to do in, uh, data-wise is provide insights both on technique and injury prevention. So. Uh, technique, it, it can be a little bit esoteric, but coaches, that's what we have really smart athletes to tell them, hey, your angle for a throw was off-centered. Uh, the, the range of motion for this uh, particular exercise was off or, or could be extended further. And so everything is really biomechanical in terms of angles, forces, distances, range of motion. And then that, I would say, seamlessly segues nicely into injury prevention to say, hey, these these range of motions that are too extreme, uh, you can tear ligaments, you can, you can tear tendons. Uh, you know, doing this activity repeatedly for too long would cause fatigue. And we give that information to both the athletes and also to the coaches. So I think they're part of the same pot, the, the technique analysis and also the injury prevention. But at the end of the day, it should be owned and, and viewed and appreciated, hopefully, by the athletes themselves. Um, in the end, though, you want everybody wearing this, right? This isn't just for high-end athletes. Is that correct? Yeah, that's that's definitely correct. I mean, if I can put this on my parents, I would love to you know, <laughs> try to try to prevent any kind of falls or, or keep their their, their gait in, in the correct fashion. But uh, as of today, given that our data is quite um, detailed and it's very specific for a particular sport, and we want to give you the best insights, it has been directed mainly to uh, the professional athletes. Uh, we're working with the NBA. We have, uh, you know, very, very talented baseball players working with us, tennis players working with us. Um, but our strategy is to take that learning, to take learning from the best of the best. Like, I'm still learning what it takes to be a good runner. I'm still learning what a good serve looks like. But once we take that learning, uh, in, in some sense, computerize that, train models and machine models, uh, we can give those insights back out to, you know, amateur sports, the consumer and so on, uh, mainly, uh, and hopefully even medicine. This is one of the first times I've heard of wearable technology that I feel like it's possible it could become the new uniform. Is that a possibility that NBA players will be wearing your product? I, I would love to. I, I don't mean to make a commercial out of this, but I would love for leagues and what you see on TV to wear next tiles. And I, I, I love to stay in the philosophical world because that's what drives and fuels uh, my team's ambition, like the, the idea to have this next house inside or powered by next house experience that, yes, you can still wear your uniform. Yes, you can still buy from the Nikes, the Pumas, the Adidas, but they have this intelligence imbued in them that comes from next house. So this idea that you have this Intel chip powering your computers, your cell phones, even sometimes cars, you know, we want to provide that intelligence through the fabric. So if, if baseball players want to wear their uniforms but have the next house experience, we can add that to it. If you want that experience to be added into your school uniform, maybe we can do that. Uh, and we can do so many other things that, that are derived from sewing because we can also make things like bedding, make, make things like uh, you know carpentry. Um, for the everyday user, whether it's going to be my bed or something I wear to run and, <laughs> and I'm not going to be you know a big-time athlete, um, can you kind of take me through, and maybe you haven't gotten there yet, how are you going to educate me on the information you're going to provide me about myself? Yeah, so uh, I think there's two phases. There, there, there are three phases, and the first phase we're tackling now, the first phase is, again, working with the elite athletes. But the second phase is more the demographic who are the weekend warriors, the, the amateur athletes, uh, people like hopefully you and me who, who tend to exercise maybe three to four times or maybe maybe a little less per week. But it's really this demographic that we want to, in a way, gamify the experience. So, again, once we uh, make a stake at, and say, hey, we know what the best of the best looks like. We know what the mechanics of a throw, the mechanics of a serve look like for the best of the best. 
let me try to teach people on the, the, the amateur to aspiring level to say, hey, we, we understand the different body types of athletes. And rather than saying, hey, you should always work out like LeBron James, we can probably gamify the experience and say, hey, your body type and how your technique looks like you know, it's better suited for these types of people. So train like these types of people. You know, train, train like Steph Curry. Train like LeBron James. You know, train like the best. And to, you know, give them that that athletic journey of, of saying, how do you train like the best? And give that to these these, these youth athletes and, and hopefully people like you and me that could uh, probably play that game and, and get better through those ways. Um, but then the third tranche is more for the consumer. And, and that's where we're still trying to identify what that silver bullet is like what what's a universal theme that we can give to the everyday consumer and have them engage and, and right now i can say it's not ten thousand steps we're not going to tell people hey you know, walk another ten thousand steps and you'll be healthy um so that's still a a work in the making of trying to understand you know what's that single thread that can tie all consumers together and what insights do they want but i think that's a discovery process that will be really fun at next time Guys, are you looking for that extra confidence when it's time to have fun? Let me tell you about BlueChew.com. BlueChew is a unique online service that delivers the same active ingredients as Viagra and Cialis, but in chewable form and at a fraction of the cost. BlueChew's tablets help men combat all forms of ED. BlueChew is also an online prescription service, so no visits to the doctor's office, no awkward conversations, and no waiting in line at the pharmacy. And it ships right to your door in a discreet package. The process is simple. Sign up at BlueChew.com, consult with one of their licensed medical providers, and once you're approved, you'll receive your prescription within days. And the best part, all done online. Blue Chew's tablets, made in the United States, and they prepare and ship direct, so it's cheaper than a pharmacy. And here's a special deal for our listeners. Try Blue Chew free when you use our promo code FUTURE, F-U-T-R, at checkout. Just pay $5 shipping. That's bluechew.com, promo code FUTURE, F-U-T-R, to receive your first month free. You use the word gamify. What did you mean by that? I mean, there are like... There are fitness centers like Orange Theory that kind of gamify the experience of working out at their gyms. Is that is that what you're talking about, or, or do you have something else in mind? Yeah, I I, I say that's that's definitely one way of uh, defining gamification. Uh, how we are thinking about it is to gamify it as in you know you, you have like a leaderboard or you have um, kind of an objective, right? Uh, to to be the best of the best, they have these techniques or this this is their uh pattern of, of how they throw a ball or how they do an activity and how can you mimic that because you know given uh you know these elite athlete body types given that we're similar how can i train like them and how can i mimic and repeat their patterns it's more of a kind of a, a copy and paste kind of game of of mimicking your body to, to theirs so once you do that and, and you gamify that experience, it's, it's more about how do you compete with your, your neighbors. And so that kind of orange theory gamification is also true as well because our devices are cloud connected, they're interconnected, you can get them via or use them via an app. So that kind of leaderboard as well is, is applicable. Okay. Um, take me through the clothing itself. Um, how did you think through comfort of wearing it? Uh, comfort, I would say it, it just really boils down to just being a good garment designer. Uh, my background is in design and I used to make shoes and I also used to make a uh, lower body wear like socks and, and leggings. And so the understanding that we work on garments first and then we start to study, okay, where are openings, where are opportunities to add sensors. Think of that second, uh, gave us a, a, a pretty good appreciation of, um, maintaining comfort. So the the sewing designs, even the fabric themselves, like we, we still get the fabric from um, the same suppliers you would normally get for, for Under Armour and Lululemon. Like there's nothing really stopping us from using the fabrics uh, from those, those brands as well. So I guess what I'm trying to say is that we are just good textile designers first huh. and then we figure out where to put the fences in afterwards. And that's why we're in New York. I, I work with amazing textile designers in New York. I've, been participating in the fashion district in New York as well, the, the garment district as well. So, you know, not starting from tech and tr trying to, you know, boil down the tech to make it work. Huh. We, we try to make the garment work and then build out the census from there. If that was your background, how did you get into the tech part of it? 
Yo, yeah, I, I would say it, it, I kind of hopscotch back and forth. So my undergraduate degree was in electrical engineering and computer science. So I, I had a very technical background as an undergraduate. But when I did my PhD, that was really hands-on and touch and feel. I did material science. I, I, I wanted to touch and feel things. And then after that, I had the opportunity to, to work with Puma and see how that could be translated to fashion and how that could be translated to to uh, wearability and then afterwards came to new york learned a lot about sewing and and, and fashion here and then started an exile okay um all right let me ask this about the clothing as well um in the case of this clothing it i would assume it needs to fit a certain way to get back the data that you are looking for all clothing at some point stretches changes um, have you gotten through the idea of what the lifespan of a Nextiles product is so that the data will consistently be accurate or it's time to move on to another piece of clothing? Yeah, that's an amazing question. So for us, that's, that's always a challenge of how does the fit impact the data? You can imagine if you just wear something wrong, we'll just get the wrong data. If you, if you wore uh, your shirt in the opposite direction, yeah, of course, the data would be, would be incorrect. So for the data insights that we're trying to provide and, and, and they're very high fidelity, meaning that we want to measure technique. Uh, it, it is a compression uniform. They're really snugly tight on the skin. So for the arm sleeve, it's hugging your arm before a knee sleeve, it's hugging the knee. But over time though, even if it overstretches or dilates, we have algorithms and machines that can uh, calibrate the data. So even if you wear it a little bit off, or even if the sensor is kind of off by a few centimeters or a few angles, uh, we have the machine understand, okay, you, you have been wearing it a little bit off, but I can calibrate the data to make it look correct. You know, plan out the baseline and recompute the minimum maximum. So for that case, is we've been pretty good at making the data consistent. However, um, we haven't done a pure longevity study, but I can assume that our garments should last like any other garments, maybe six to 12 months. The thing that would break our product is what would break a normal clothes which is like fraying or tearing so if you if you tear the fabric you know our, our senses are teared as well so that longevity you know we're hoping we could reach maybe a year or more okay um you also recently have gotten some grants from the government um which partially would lead me to believe that the military is interested in what you're building is that true yeah that, that, that's also true and i definitely have to appreciate that our company runs on r&d all right, we, we want to reinvent new technologies, new ways to innovate, and that has been supported by the government. So we did get the uh, a grant, the phase one grant from the National Science Foundation in uh, mid to late 2021. Uh, we were also awarded a Air Force grant via AFWERT to really uh, apply this technology onto air fighters. And so with these two grants, it's, it's really highly focused on innovating on new materials, uh, presenting to the world that we are the company to to work on soft goods and and uh, and wearables. So um, with that to support, we've been pretty good at innovating and, and providing new materials to the market. And uh, we're hoping to work with them a, a lot further. So for phase twos and hopefully phase three. It's all really cool. Dr. George Sun is the CEO and the founder of Next Styles. Thank you so much for joining us. Hey, I appreciate it. Thank you so much for the time. On the next Future Sport Podcast, changing the game for outfitting America's youth sports teams. Sure, so Squad Locker is a tech-enabled service company that makes it really easy for youth sports administrators, coaches, teachers, uh, even corporations to design uh, apparel that they want their community to have access to, make it available for sale. Um, and then from there, we go ahead and individually decorate every garment on a single unit basis and deliver it direct to the consumer's home. That's Gary Goldberg, CEO of Squad Locker, who is helping teams of all levels streamline their uniform needs. That will do it for this episode. As always, the future is now. This is the Future Sport Podcast. I'm Bram Weinstein.